Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Breath of God, we need a touch from you. Shine down on us with the light of truth. Stir our hearts and set our spirits free. Holy Spirit, come fill this place. Come fill each heart. Fill each empty space. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our most blessed Redeemer. Let us all say amen. 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 Can we give God a hand for the music ministry this morning? Amen. 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 Singing and church go together, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. I want to thank uh, Deaconess Bolger for reading all of those long names. Amen. Amen. She did such a wonderful job. And Deaconess Nash leading us to the throne of grace. But I would just like to bring your attention once again to Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to read the second half of that verse. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. And I'm reading from the Christian Standard Translation of the Bible. Which says, since today is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Since today is holy to our Lord. Don't grieve. Don't be upset. Wipe that tear from your eye. Why? Because the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. With God's help this morning, I would like to preach and teach from the thought, strength for our journey. Strength for our journey. And if I had to put a subtitle on it, I would say, Experiencing the Joy of True Worship. Experiencing the Joy of True Worship. Dickie Mack, there's an old Christian cliche that says, Your attitude determines your altitude. And, and the point being made is that our attitudes, the way we think or feel about life, the circumstances of life, and most importantly about God, greatly influences how high we can climb and how far we can go. To, to put it another way, fulfillment in life isn't so much about what happens to us, but how we respond to what happens to us. And, and, and that response is rooted in our attitudes. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Write it down. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says, As a man or woman thinks in their heart, so is she or he. And, and so your attitude, church, in most cases, has everything to do with the way your situation will turn out. Now, I, I begin this sermon this way because 
Somebody here this morning needs to change their attitude. I, I, I said you need to change your attitude. Why? Because you've allowed your frustrations in your life to frustrate your hope in God. You, you've allowed your disappointments to cause you to lose confidence in yourself. So, when you should be praising God, you're having a pity party. When, when we could be worshiping God, we're worrying. When, when we should be praying and fasting, some of us are smoking weed and drinking too much liquor. Uh, Diggy Marvin's not here. That's at the church around the corner, right? <laughs> growing up, y'all, growing up, I was a very sickly child. I had to go back and forth to the doctor all the time. But, but one of the best ideas someone came up with was the decision to put a playroom in the doctor's office. Now, now, my parents took me there because I was sick and I needed to see a doctor. And, and even though I wasn't feeling well, the playroom at the doctor's office distracted me from the pain of my problem until my problem could get fixed. Let, let me say that again. I said, the parents took me there because I was sick. And I needed to see the doctor. And even though I wasn't feeling well, just going to the playroom at the doctor's office distracted me from the pain of my problem until my problem could get fixed. The, the playroom gave me joy in a bad situation. Well, well guess what, church? That's the way... God works. Even though things may not be going the way we want them to go on the outside, God has designed a playroom in our souls. In, in the midst of your circumstances, God's joy can distract us from our pain until God makes provision for our healing. Now, whether you realize it or not, that's good news. I, I said it's good news, y'all. And, and it's good news because although we can't always control the circumstances that are going on outside of us, you and I can make choices to influence what goes on. All hell can be breaking out all around you. But that hell doesn't have to get up inside of you. When we learn to worship God. Do I have any worshipers here this morning? When, when we learn to worship God, despite the chaos around us, not only will we experience real joy, but we'll also find strength. For our journey. Any, anybody need any strength this morning? Come on, you know, sir, that clapping needs some strength. Come on, let's put those hands together. Anybody need strength this morning? <laughs> you see, the, the, the text is teaching us that when we worship, we can experience, oh, we can experience. You, you do know that worship is an when we experience worship, we can get an abundant supply of joy because this joy is the joy of the Lord. In, in other words, this joy comes from God. God shares his joy with those who worship him in spirit and in truth. The, the songwriter put it this way. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. 
And the world can't. And, and since the world can't give us this joy, why should we let the world or the people of this world stop us from experiencing this joy? And so, God is extending an invitation to you and I this morning to experience the joy of true worship. Now, we just read it together in Nehemiah chapter 8. We read that the Jews have just finished rebuilding the wall that surrounded the temple in Jerusalem. Come on, y'all, don't fall asleep on me. Stay with me this morning. This is a Bible-believing church, isn't it? So it's okay to teach the Bible, isn't it? In Nehemiah chapter 8, the Jews have just finished rebuilding the wall that surrounded the temple in Jerusalem. A after overcoming all types of slander and opposition from their enemies, by the grace of God, they completed this project in 52 days. And, and now that they're all done, all of the exiles gathered together, brother deacons, for a worship service. They, they were gathering to renew their covenant as a nation with Yahweh. Verse 2 says that, that Ezra the scribe brings the law of Moses. And he begins to read it in the hearing of the people. And, and the Bible says, when Ezra opened the scroll and read the word of God, he, he read it with such authority that the people stood up on their feet out of reverence for God's word. He, he, he read the scripture with such charisma that the truth of God's word started burning in his heart. So much so that the text says Ezra got happy. You, you ever get, you ever been to a church where they get happy just reading the scripture? Ezra read it with such charisma that it burned in his heart and he got happy. And the Bible says that he started shouting and praising God. In other words, Ezra started having church. I said Ezra started having Church, verse 6 says that Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And, and when he started shouting, everybody started shouting. The text, the text says that some folks started saying, amen, amen. That, this is my kind of church, y'all. Other folks started lifting their hands. And worship the God. So just because some people are clapping, you don't have to be like that. You may want to lift your hands. Others started lifting their hands. And then some folks began to bow their heads. And bow their faces and worship to the Lord. They, they were, they were, there were those who were moved in their spirit so deeply by what they heard, read from the Bible. That they began to mourn and weep. I'm trying to tell you, y'all. Church got good that Sunday morning. But stay with me, y'all. Even though church got good, the problem was that even though some of the folks had heard these words before and they could quote them from memory, and, and some of the other folks felt inspired by what they heard being read, they didn't understand what was being read. Can, can, I, can I say that again? I said, even though everybody was happy and shouting, Some of them could quote it from memory. Because they've been, they been going to church all their life. You start the verse, they can end it. Others never heard it before, but it felt good just to hear it. 
The only problem was they did not understand what was being read. Verse 8 says, look, you got your Bible, make sure the pastor not making stuff up, y'all. Verse 8 says that it wasn't until the elders translated and gave the meaning of the word that the people were able to read it and understand it for them. And it wasn't until then that the church, I mean, the nation began to experience the true joy of worship. Why? Why? Because perhaps for the first time, they were experiencing, listen, the joy of understanding the word. Somebody say the joy of understanding the word. I, I don't want to start no trouble this morning, but have you ever experienced the joy of understanding the word? Come, come on now. Don't play with me. One of the reasons we can have joy despite what's happening around us is because we understand. Somebody say understand. understand. One of the reasons we can have joy despite what's going on around us is because we understand from the word that God has given us power to overcome. You know, Shaq, when, when I was a little boy, Shaq, my, my father bought me a punching bag. Now, this is an old school punching bag. This is not one of the fancy ones like you got now. It, it was basically like a, a painted balloon. Some, some of y'all older guys know what I'm talking about, don't you? And, and Shaq, you, you would hit the punching bag every which way. But nothing that you did to it could keep that punching bag from popping right back up. You, you could slam it to the ground and boom, it came right back up. And, and the reason it would come back up is because at its foundation, on the inside, there was a weight. And, and the weight forced whatever pressure that you put on it on the outside to bring it right back up. I, I wish y'all could see what I was talking about. Well, that's what the Bible calls joy, y'all. You see, no matter what you're going through, bang, bang, you pop right back up. No, no matter what your situation is, bang, bang, back up again. No, no matter what the doctor's report said, bang, bang, back up again. To, to say it another way, the circumstances of life will hit you sometimes and hit you hard, bang, bang. But when you understand from the word that greater is he, that is in you than he that's in the world. When you understand from the word that God gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you understand from the word that everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. When you understand this from the word, You'll also understand that your ability to recover is because you have a weightiness down on the inside. And so, whatever pressure you experience on the outside may knock you down, bang, bang, but it can't knock you out. It, 
It might knock you down. But it can't knock you out. That's why the Bible says that weeping may endure for a but come on say it like you mean but comes when tell somebody I'm back up the Bible says that in the presence of God there is the fullness of tell somebody I'm back up in fact sister Sheila it's God's joy that got you back up. Because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my. And because I'm back up. Anybody back up here this morning? I, I, I know you got hit with some stuff. They mean. Lost your job. They mean. Child acting crazy. Ran out of gas. Because. Tell somebody I'm back up. Because I'm back up. I offer sacrifices of joy. In the tabernacle. I, I know it's been a long service y'all but. Is there anybody here who has been knocked down by life? Bang, bang. But because you understand the word, your faith has allowed you to experience the joy of bouncing back up. Well, you ought to give God some praise for that right there. Give him praise for giving you strength on your journey. So, some of y'all look a little drowsy. He must got hit pretty hard. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> and so, the joy. Somebody say joy. God, God restore the joy to the church again. You, you remember when we used to be excited about gathering for church? Now, we come, we come with nothing, we don't expect nothing, we say we worship God, but we don't want God to do nothing. We, we rather stay miserable, because it makes us sound spiritual. Well, you know I'm going through. Well, guess what? We about hit too, but we got back up. The joy of true worship is experienced when we understand the word of God. But, but if we're going to experience true joy in worship, we must also make God's priorities our priorities. And, and when we make God's priorities our priorities, we must come to grips with what God requires us to know and to do for the poor. Okay, all right. Here go Pastor Solomon with his stuff again. Come on. Look at chapter 8, verse 10. Verse 10 says, Go and eat what is rich. Drink what is sweet. Here it is. And send portions to those who have. Since today is holy to the Lord. Let's stop right there. You see, Sister June, God wanted his people to experience the joy of being a blessing to those who are in need. But you know what? 
I didn't fully understand this truth until I began serving with the homeless. I, I told y'all before, y'all. You see, I always thought that this message of being a blessing to those in need was directed to those who were materially blessed. You know, those who got some bank. Those who got some money. I, I thought that God was saying to those who have plenty to eat, they ought to share with those who don't. But, Janice, when, when I saw a homeless brother with only two shirts, give one of his shirts to a brother who had no shirt. When, when I saw another homeless man with no money to buy a meal for himself, share his meal with someone who had not eaten in three days. It, it wasn't until I saw a man give away his last pair of clean underwear. That, that's draws if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He gave away his last pair of clean underwear to somebody who had defecated in his. It wasn't until then that I really began to appreciate what the Lord is calling us to do. And, and, and what God showed me is that being a blessing to those in need is not about how much stuff we have. It's about our attitude towards the person in need. It, it's about us seeing the need. You know, we, we get real blind, you know. It, it's like when we were growing up on, on, and we ride the subway, right? And we there with the young guys and old lady get, gets on and you know we're supposed to get asleep the seat right then I act like I'm asleep <laughs> because if I act like I'm asleep that means I don't <laughs> we act like we don't see and so it's about us seeing the need, feeling compassion for the person, and then moving to do something about it. Amen. It's about how we respond to the needs that God allows to cross our paths. And, and, and the joy comes. Somebody say joy. joy. The joy comes when we consider that but for the grace of God. That could have been me. The, the joy comes when we make the sacrifice that benefits somebody else. The joy comes when we see the satisfaction on the face of someone who has not had a good meal in days. The, the joy comes when we see a person's dignity restored because they've been treated like a human being. The joy comes from God as we live with the understanding that we have been blessed to be a blessing. Amen. The text says that the joy of the Lord is our So don't grieve because God is giving us the opportunity to strengthen our community as we experience the joy of being a blessing to those in need. Y'all remember? You were raised in the Baptist church like me. The word joy is really an acronym. J-O-Y. Jesus Others and say lie. I'm 
I'm going to wrap it up here, y'all. So if we're going to experience the joy of worship, first, we need to grow in our understanding of the word of God. Second, we must seek to be a blessing to those in need. And then and only then can we finally experience the joy of anticipating God's future blessing. I said the joy of anticipating God's future blessing. I, I'm in the text, y'all. We just read it. The day that this worship service was taking place, the Bible says it was the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and during the Feast of Tabernacles, the nation was to, somebody say, remember. remember. The nation was to remember how God kept their ancestors while they wandered for 40 years in the desert. They were to remember. Somebody say remember. remember. They were to remember how God supernaturally led them by day in a pillar of cloud and led them at night by a pillar of fire. They were to remember. Somebody say remember. They want to remember how when they were hungry, God fed them manna from heaven. When, when they were thirsty, God gave them water from a rock. They were too. How, how for 40 years, they, they wandered in the desert and their clothes and their sandals never wore out. In other words, God wanted them to rehearse their testimony. I said, God wanted them to rehearse. Does anybody here this morning have a testimony? <laughs> Does anybody here have any history with God? Has God been good to you? Come on, don't play with me this morning. Has God been good to you? Has he made a way out of no way in your life? God made a youth way to wait for you in your wilderness experience. Has God provided rivers of living water in your desert situation? Well, Deacon Brown, when we learn to trust God today, considering God's mighty acts in our lives yesterday, We'll begin to experience the joy of anticipating God's future. That, that's why the songwriter said, I get joy when I think about what he's done for. You don't know like I know what he's done for. And when we begin to think about all that God has already done, we'll begin to praise God in advance for what he's going to do. I wish somebody had some faith here this morning. I said when you think about what he's already done, You don't have to wait for him to do it. You can praise him in that for what he's. Is God's credit good with you? I said, is God's credit good with you? Praise God in advance for things 
Not yet. Come on now. Now faith is the substance of things, the evidence of things. Anybody got faith here this morning? Come on, don't play with me. Anybody got faith in God this morning? If, if you have faith in God, turn to somebody and say, it's harvest time. Lord have mercy. I said it's harvest time. So Mr. Witherspoon, don't get weary and well doing. For in due season, you will, if you do not. It's harvest time, Corinthian. Oh, I wish y'all believed that this morning. It's harvest time, church. Miss Lucy, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. Take the mic, sister. Tell somebody it's harvest time. Hallelujah. Everybody rest on your feet. When we live with the joy when we live with the joy somebody just say joy. When we live with the joy that comes from anticipating what God has promised to do in your life. It will give you the strength to hold on and hold out until your change comes. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. There may be someone here this morning who needs that kind of strength in their lives. Well, David the psalmist says that this, this joy is the joy that comes from salvation. When you repent, turn from the ways of the world, and put your trust in God through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God will forgive you of your sins and give you new life. He'll, he'll introduce you, excuse me, to your creator. In fact, your creator will speak to you by name. You'll be his child and he will be your father. He'll lift up your bow down head. He'll give you a future and a hope. But you just need to receive that gift today. 
God, God is not mad at you. I don't care what you've done. Don't, don't let us holy looking folks fool you. We got a past. Some of us still got the present. But we learned last week that we can live with hope because God's mercies are new every morning. Someone needs to give their heart to God. Give your hand to the preacher. Is there one this morning? Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Church ought to be praying. encourage her as she comes hallelujah 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 oh my soul Today is the day of salvation. The day that you hear his voice. Do not harden your heart. Second call you. You may already be a Christian. But you do not have a church home. The doors of the Corinthian church are open to you as well. We would love for you to, to come go with us and come grow with us in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is there one? You may be tuning in virtually. 215-438-1060. Uh, Come on, Corinthians, let's sing it together. He has done. He has done. He has done. Come on, one more time. One more time. Bless the Lord. Bless. Oh my soul. And all.
grateful. Yeah. We're so glad that you have responded to the, the leading of the Holy Spirit and obeyed God's leading in doing fellowship with not only your family family, but now your brothers and sisters in Christ as well. Amen. 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 One of the wonderful things about being related to the family of deacons and leaders in the church is that you got the inside track <laughs> on how things work. But um, one of the deaconess will be in contact with you to talk to you about next steps and how we can get you involved and assimilated into the life and ministry of this church. Uh, we are so happy to have you Ooh. and we praise God. Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all sing together. 